antidepressant medications tend to have a very poor response in these kids, usually from the very beginning, um, within a matter of days to a few weeks on the outside. And one of the issues that I often see is that then the dose of the antidepressant is actually increased so that, and further increased even yet, so that these kids wind up on high doses of antidepressant medications, meanwhile tending to get worse and worse with each successive increase in antidepressant dose. Why is that? Because antidepressants are not at the heart of what is wrong. These kids are not really depressed. They are, the medical term is called dysphoric. They tend to be negative, they tend to be pessimistic, they tend to have low self-esteem, they tend to have a very poor opinion of themselves and other people. People misinterpret those cluster of symptoms as depressed. When we think of them as periodic dysphoria, they respond far better to mood stabilizing medications than to antidepressant medications. So their symptoms are not depression, their symptoms are the effects of trauma. Their symptoms are the effects of trauma and potential predispositions to, to substantial mental illness. Science has demonstrated that we are very much the, pro the product of our genetic makeup. So, uh, so as such, these genes influence to a profound agree, uh, degree how we, how we operate both physically and mentally and cognitively and emotionally in the world. That we have to be the products not only of our environment but of our genetic makeup. And so we all would like to think that we are almost exclusively the products of our environment. And the truth of the matter is that's very wrong. We are very much the products of the genes that we inherit. And if we are inheriting genes that have among them predispositions to profound mental illness, then those children inherit those predispositions. And because the profound mental illness that the parents have produces profound mental illness in their children, these symptoms develop early in life and they develop in a severe degree. When two correlations in, in medicine I think are, are perhaps appropriate here. One is childhood diabetes, the other is childhood asthma. You never, ever, ever hear of symptoms of childhood diabetes in a mild form. You never hear of childhood asthma in a mild form. They are always inherited in a severe or profound form. And therefore, the earlier the onset, the more severe the disorder, the more intensive the treatment needs to be. It is exactly the same when we are talking about mental health disorders. So can you clarify, um, would you say that all children with RAD have mental illnesses? No, I would not say that all children have mental illnesses. However, we certainly have to look at potential predispositions to mental illness, but what we're really looking at is the so-called comorbidity, the combination of multiple factors within these children the potential predisposition in some ways to, to mental illness, but also the profound effects that trauma has had on their life, either abuse or neglect or the combination of both. There are lots of studies and the upside is that all of these studies are, are dramatically on the increase from attachment sciences, looking at the profound effect that neglect and abuse has on the development of children's brains. <laughs>